Hi, welcome back. Hopefully this is the third and final part of the FAT16 file system. So rather than copy the Paris bitmap, I'll copy this desktop. So on your keyboard, hit print screen. I'll now go into paint, paste. That's my desktop. So I can resize it here. So pixels, 800. Uncheck the maintain aspect ratio, 800 by 4. 80. OK. File. Save as. I want it as a bitmap. 24 bit color bitmap. John B. Save. Now I'll open my edition. It's a really early edition. Adobe Photoshop Elements 9. So edit. Right, so if I'll go file. Open. John B. Bitmap. There we are. Open. Although I don't want all this background. So crop, image, crop. That paint didn't work very well, did it? I'll crop it there. Right, so now I have to resize it. Right, image, resize, image size. Right, so pixels, 800 by 480, OK. Right now file, save as, so it's a bitmap. John B still, save, replace it, right this is the important bit, so you want a 16 bit colour, you want to flip the row order, otherwise the file will be upside down, so advanced, and you want this one here, actually it's not giving me the option for this one here, this second one is like alpha blending, so you get uh, 8 bits for the alpha, then 565, five. It's not giving it to me on this one for, uh, for some reason. Anyways, you want 565, five. so red, 5 bits of red, 6 bits of green, 5 bits of blue. So no alva blending. Flip the row order, 16 bits. OK. Right, come out of there. Send it to your memory card. Right, so I've now put that picture on a memory card. Let's see if it's there. Oh, I've still got the Paris one there, so let me delete the Paris one. Delete. Right, so John Bitmap. There we are. So now, if I open that program you saw the other day, the HXD program, I'll close all this, start again. So you can open the disk or open the disk image. So if I open the disk image, there's just John B Bitmap. We've got 512 bytes per sector. Right, this is the bitmap. Now, unfortunately, this program resets the offset. This picture is not at offset zero. I actually know it's up at something like 696 from the boot sector. But what's important is the header. So we've got something like 70 bytes of header. So 70 bytes tells the computer what format this image is. So what's important is these first two bits 42 and 4D are the BM that confirms it's a bitmap, it confirms to the computer it's a bitmap file. The only other thing that's consistent with this image when created by Adobe Photoshop and it's different for all editors is the width of the picture. So if I bring up Windows Calculator we could work this out by hand as you saw last night. I already know this is 800, so little endian, so 0, 3 first, then 2, 0, there we go, 320 hexadecimal, 800 decimal. So this picture is 800 wide, 800 pixels wide. Right, so I've created the picture, I've put it onto the SD card, I had to format the SD card again. Let me go to the root directory. 472. What you may not know, and I forgot, if you delete a file, all it does is deletes this first character. I forget what character it puts there, but it deletes that character so that the computer knows it's deleted, but the file still exists. So I put my John B on the memory card on top of the Paris bitmap and my microcontroller still showed the Paris bitmap because it was still there. 
and that's because I'm looking for a BMP. I'm not looking for the first character of the file name. I formatted the card and did the slow format where it puts zeros everywhere and now I've recopied the John B bitmap to the memory card. So this is the root directory and there's nothing else in it now, just John B. So I've changed my code. If you looked at the C file the other day and you look at it again today, you'll notice some changes. My C file now skips to position eight. If it's looking for a text file, it looks for a T here. If it's looking for a bitmap, it looks for a B here. Then if it finds an M in the next position, it's found the bitmap. If it doesn't find them there, it jumps 16 places. The C file that's linked in the first video is now the current C file and it's been updated and is even more reliable than it was. So this is the root directory. I know the file actual sector and that's what my C file refers to the location of the bitmap. It refers to the actual sector. It's 696 on this particular card. It's different to the other one with two text files. So this is the whole bitmap. Here's some bits taken from that header. So BM confirms it's a bitmap. That's the size of the file in green. However, this file size is in the bitmap header. But that file size is also in the root directory. Let me show you. Back to the root directory. 472. There we go. I mentioned the other day. That's the file size there. So 48B8. I haven't got my glasses on. So it begins with 48B8. Back to the picture. There you go. 48B8. So that's the file size. In orange, this is the pixels width we worked out a couple of minutes ago. So it's 800 pixels wide. This particular header does not give the depth or height of the picture. So it doesn't need to because we've got the file length. So all you do is keep on drawing 800 pixels until you get to the end of the file. Simple. In this header, these four bytes, little endian, remember? The actual file location of the bitmap. So because this is 46, I'll give you a look here. Hexadecimal 46. 70. So once we actually find the location of the bitmap, that position there on the Adobe bitmap header is telling us the bitmap is at position 46 or the bitmap start, which is 70 bytes in. So that means this header is 70 bytes. So this is all we need. The size of the file and how many pixels wide the picture is and the start location of the actual picture. So if I turn to my C file, this is the last bit I'm gonna go through. So I've changed the code. If it doesn't find those text files because it was looking for two, it jumps to a loop underneath. So if it doesn't find that one, jumps to this one, doesn't find that one, jumps to this and looks for the bitmap. And you can see the location equals location plus 16. So I'm jumping 16 bytes every time it doesn't see a B and an M. And I've deleted the two upper because it seems the file extension is always uppercase. So if it finds the bitmap, it gives you the file name. This is what I discussed the other day with you, the time, the hours. Oh, so, so there's the time data and it's printing out the hours, minutes, and then you should remember this. This is the day, this is the month, and you remember, hopefully you remember, the year was the left most significant seven bits. And I've just shown it here in binary because you don't have to use hexadecimal or decimal. You can use binary. But so those seven bits up there 
I'm then shifting nine places to the right to put them down there. Adding 1980 to them gives us the year. So you might remember those numbers add up to 41. I'm showing these buffer locations on the screen. Buffer 19 and 18, remember the little Indian. So data start location on card, data buffer location 19 and location 18. But because 19 is because it's little Indian, 19 comes first and you have to shift it left by eight places. That gives us the location on the card. This may well be zero, but if it's zero, then it remains zero. So that's writing the data start location on the card. But then to find the picture from the root directory is actually very difficult. So I'm not going to go through it because it will take me all night. If you want to know how to find your actual data location on a FAT16 file system, run through this code here. You need to know the root directory, multiply that by 512, number of root directories equals the number of root directories times 32. And then the sum, you can see I've got a sum here. You have to subtract two from this number, data start location on card. Two, I think it's because we've got two file allocation tables. So do this equation first, 64 times 512. Then data start location on card minus 2 multiplied by that. So then that's the sum. But then so the root directory in bytes. So my current root directory is 472. Then we have to work out how many bytes are in that. So root directory in bytes plus the number of root directory entries. And then it's writing the sum again there. And once it's got that sum, it's, a, it's actually a massive number, then divide the sum by 512, you get your actual sector. There's information on the internet, but it's actually scarce to find the right bits. So if you want to understand how you derive the starting sector of your actual data, look at this maths. So this bit here is one last check, is checking that B and the M in the header of the bitmap. And the good news is the bitmap doesn't have to be 800 by 480. It can be any size you want. If it's been created with the Adobe Elements 9 or later, the header is the same. And I tried it the other day. I could get, a, uh, I think, 400 by 272 put the image on and it scaled it down. It's fantastic. Well, so I changed the program, put a delay in. There's the two text files, then the picture. And you see Paris 1. There we go. Now I'll put this other memory card in with just the, I forget, the desktop. Swap that over, plug it back in, you see a different location down here. So this it couldn't find the text, John B bitmap, there's a new location, that's the maths, and there's the desktop. And as I say, any size bitmap will work with that program. You need to try a different editor, find an editor that can convert something to a 16-bit color and see if it's got the same bitmap header, but I checked on Wikipedia, there are a ton of different headers. It doesn't seem that there's not one consistent bitmap header, but maybe the size is in the same place, don't know. So this has only been an introduction into the FAT16 file system, but it's, it's been quite detailed and I've given you a ton of information. Hopefully you found it helpful and useful. The C file is in the first video, not this one, so 
If you want to make a donation for the hours and hours of these, uh, the work gone into these videos, feel free, the link's below. If you liked it, click like. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.